Life is hard, so it's pretty common for people just to go about their lives drowning out all the outside noise in society. You have your own problems to deal with and don't have time for the news cycle. However, this can cause you to spend more money than you need to. No one wants to do that. So here are a couple topics you should keep in the back of your mind. Let's go. The first one that I'm sure you've heard at least a few times is a bear market. So this is a prolonged period of stock prices decreasing about 20% or more, usually from its most recent high. And this is also paired with economic uncertainty and negative investor sentiment. According to Investopedia, bear markets can be caused by a weak or slowing or sluggish economy, bursting market bubbles, pandemics, wars, geopolitical crisis, and dramatic paradigm shifts in the economy, such as shifting to an online economy. Furthermore, the signs of a weak or slowing economy are typically low employment, low disposable income, weak productivity, and drops in business profit. Bear markets can last anywhere between a month and a year. There's really no way to predict it. Also, some people think that they can invest at certain points during a bear market, trying to time the market. I don't recommend this because the stock market is very unpredictable. And also, if you want to invest in a stock, that means that you like the message, like the product, agree with what the company is doing, and you want to hold it long term. Now, a bull market is the exact opposite, a prolonged period of stock prices increasing, usually 20% or more. Now, this is caused by a strong or strengthening economy and also coincides with decreasing unemployment and increasing investor confidence. Bull markets tend to run for a little under four years, but that's just the average. The longest one ever was from 2009 to 2020, so around 11 years. Again, like with bear markets, it makes no sense to change up your investing strategy just because the economy is going one way or another. It makes more sense long-term to stick with your strategy and invest regardless. Just make sure you can afford it and be prepared for your stocks to go up and down, sometimes drastically, because they will. The unemployment rate is something that I'm sure you've heard dozens of times. Well, according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, the unemployment rate represents the number of unemployed people as a percentage of the labor force. The labor force is the sum of the employed and unemployed. Something to be aware of. The unemployment rate only takes into account those who are employed and unemployed. So individuals who have no desire to work are excluded. These people are defined as those who have not looked for work in the past four weeks. So these individuals could have stopped for a number of reasons, but until they start again, they won't be counted. So as of recording this video, the unemployment rate is around 3.8%, but in the most recent past, it was as high as 14.8 in April of 2020. When companies cut jobs, more work is put on those remaining, which can cause additional stress. Also, these workers most likely will not receive additional compensation. As for the country as a whole, the more unemployed people there are, the bigger the hit the US economy takes as roughly 70% of the GDP is consumer spending. So the higher the unemployment rate is, the more people are affected, regardless if they have jobs or not. OPEC, or the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries, is an organization that helps influence the global oil market. There are currently 12 members, Algeria, the Republic of Congo, Equatorial Guinea, Gabon, Iraq, Iran, Kuwait, Libya, Nigeria, Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates, and Venezuela. Now, OPEC has been called a cartel for decades, which they have denied on multiple occasions. However, the systematic increase and decrease in oil production has direct and severe impacts on the price of oil around the world. Typically, in a free market economy, production, distribution, prices, and more are determined by the forces of supply and demand. So if two countries both sell a product, it makes sense for one of them to lower its prices to get more business. However, if both countries work together to control the supply, then they can help influence the cost of goods and increase both of their incomes. Now, the organization has flexed its might in the past. During the Arab-Israeli War of 1973, OPEC decided to impose an embargo on the United States in response to sending aid to Israel. The subsequent embargo and production cuts caused oil prices to basically quadruple from $2.90 a barrel to $11.65 a barrel. If you don't believe me, ask your parents or grandparents. I'm sure they have very vivid memories of this experience. This, in addition to other cuts this organization has made during its tenure, is a majority of the reason why this organization receives so much ire around the world. So if you see gas prices rising and you hear OPEC in the news again, they may be correlated.
Have you ever noticed when you're purchasing something that the foreign good is more expensive than the domestic? A car is a good example. Well, it's due to a lot of reasons. According to the International Trade Administration, these include tariffs, custom fees, currency fluctuation, transactions costs, including shipping, and value-add taxes. These costs can add substantially to the final price paid by the importer, sometimes resulting in a total that is more than double the price charged in the United States. So all of these extra costs are trying to discourage domestic buyers from buying foreign, thus causing domestic sales and prices to increase. The level of tariffs that each country has drastically varies with some having them as high as 24% and others as low as zero. So the next time you're at a store and see some expensive foreign good, besides the good being expensive outright, tariffs might have a role to play. What we don't know can still affect us for better or for worse. While it's hard to keep up with the news cycle, hopefully these terms will give you a better understanding of what's happening in the world and why things are the way they are. And with that, I'm Evan, and thanks for watching. If you like what you just saw, then click on the video here. Also, if you haven't, like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you don't miss any future videos.